This is a small painting by the Sienese artist Duccio, active at the end of the 13th and very beginning of the 14th centuries, and Duccio was one of the artists who helps establish a Sienese Gothic style, and this rather well-preserved painting is an excellent example of that. And this, we're lucky because this painting is at the Metropolitan Museum of Art, and there's not a lot of the great paintings of the 1200s and early 1300s that are here in New York City, is that right? That's right, and in fact there are very, very few Duccio paintings that survive anywhere in the world. There's How only many? 13 of them total in the world. And the Met actually just purchased this one a few years ago for a very, very large sum of money. That's right, because there are only 13 of them, and all of the other paintings besides this one at the time were already in museum collections, and museums don't sell or get rid of works of art, and so when this painting came up to sale, it was the only opportunity the Met was ever going to have to buy a painting by Duccio. So we should all go and look at this one, because we're really fortunate that it's here. We're really fortunate. But it's hard not to look at it and think about how much money it costs. That's right. The Met the Metropolitan Museum won't officially confirm how much money they spent, but people estimate that they probably paid $45 million for this painting, which is less than one foot tall. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's quite a lot. So let's talk about what makes it so special. And, okay. Um, so we're, we're looking at uh, just a typical Madonna and child painting, and it's got that Sienese interest in all that gold. That's right. That's what we were talking about. It's, it's very otherworldly looking in some sense because of the intense gold in the background that has patterns incised into it that also made it more reflective when candles were burning oh, in front of and it. and her halo? The halo makes it very otherworldly. The disparity and the unevenness in scale between the infant Christ and the Virgin Mary, the flowing, undulous, liquid-like, weightless fabric that covers her body. All of these things help us understand that these figures are otherworldly figures, not a scene that you would glimpse through a window as you were walking down the street. And why does he look like a little man and not like a child? Well, that's a good question. Uh, it's not because that Duccio didn't know how to represent an infant if he wanted to, but by choosing to represent the infant Christ looking mature, looking like a little man, Duccio and viewers would have understood this as acknowledging his maturity. In other words, that Christ had the wisdom of man, the wisdom of God, even though he was a small child. And not only that, these paintings and even sculptures of the Virgin Mary with the infant Christ are supposed to remind you of the scene at the end of Christ's life mm -hmm. when the dead adult Christ is lying across his mother's lap. So by painting the figure in this way, looking as a mature, sort of older man, Duccio is doing all of these things, suggesting uh, maturity and also referencing Christ's death. And we can see Mary looking down at Christ, and there's a kind of connection between them as mother and son, and he lifts up her her headdress here and, and gazes back at her. Exactly. And she looks sad, and maybe there's that sense of foreboding of his future and how she will hold him on her lap when he's Absolutely. after the crucifixion. Even though the painting is generally otherworldly, there are some things that help us understand exactly what's going on. There are some things here that are descriptive and naturalistic, such as the childlike gesture of him pulling at her veil, the way she looks at him, and also the fact that they stand behind a painted parapet or oh, balcony. I didn't realize that was painted. This is painted here and it serves to, in a way, separate them from us. It's a boundary between them and us, but at the same time it also connects their space with our space because it's as if we glimpse them across that wall, mm -hmm. over that balcony. Mm -hmm. um, and that also is something that was rather unusual and innovative for the time. Now it looks like Mary is dressed in very dark clothing, but it would have been a very vivid blue, right? Originally it would have been a brighter, stronger blue that would also have been a very decorative uh, effect. What happened down here to the frame? Well, as I said before, this painting is very well preserved, but you notice these areas down on the bottom, this is actually where this small painting was burnt by candles that were burning in front of it. This was not an altarpiece, but it was a devotional image. So it wasn't in a church? It might have been in a church, but it wouldn't have been over an altar. It could have been hanging on the side wall of a chapel or even on a column or pier, and there would have been candles burning in front of it as people prayed in front of it, and those candles have left their mark. So it's, it's small this helps it to be a very uh, personal image. I Absolutely. Think. It has a kind of intimacy because of its scale.